Um, you're the projectionist here in the Crest Theater. One of the three. One of the three? Mm -hmm. Oh. Um, I'm the oldest. The other two young men are younger than I am. Um, how, how long have you worked with uh, movies as a projectionist? Ever since 1939. This is the 50th year. Oh my God. Have you always worked with uh, projectors like these? Always work with projectors like these. These are my favorites. Um, They're 40 years old. All of this equipment at my back is 40 years old, still runs good, have very little problem, and I'm right at home. Um, what, what makes these so much better than uh, modern projectors? Or other modern projectors are, design, are designed about the same way. The only thing is, if you keep the gears up in these, it makes no difference. These babies run in ball bearings or roller bearings. Modern projectors may just run on a shaft. See, we get cheap and then we get to short cutting. So all you have to do is just keep the gears in it correctly. This outside case never wires out. Now many years ago, before motion picture got popular, right after motion picture got popular, we used to have a projector by the name of Powers. Didn't have no case on it to film run outdoors. And years ago, I don't think you're old enough to know this, but years ago, see, celluloid was highly explosive. It would burn in a hurry. In 1942, we came along with safety film that won't burn. It'll just melt in your hand. But celluloid used to burn in a hurry. But these babies here, they still do the job. Any of us that's sitting down in the auditorium, and if these babies is kept up, they'll never know what they're. This year's projectors are they 50 or 60 years old. Um, how, how do you decide on a silent movie? Are you able to vary the speed on these? No. No, no these were on 90 feet a minute. Now, a good thing you asked that. When we had silent movies, why, if we was behind on schedule, I didn't work solid film, but I've heard this. If you're behind on schedule, it had a real stat. You could step up this projector and put it back on schedule. But this run at 90 feet a minute, you know, most of you fellas know something about tape or records. If you slow it down, then you're ow, ow, ow. Well, the same way that these will do the same thing. So they must maintain that constant speed. Um. So, uh, is all, all the film is threaded by hand into the machine? Every, even on automation, you still got to thread them by hand. The only thing is, I don't know what you fellas ever been in an automation booth. You have a big platter where you can put, oh, what is it, boss? You owe about eight hours worth of program on it. Can some of them big enough? Yeah, some of them, I think four is the standard. Yeah, it's a big platter, see? So we have to take the leaders off and the tail end off of that down there. It's 2,000 foot reels. Splice them together and then lay it on this big platter. And this big platter turns gradually to feed this projector. And then there's another big platter that takes up the film. But that's automation. But there's some things that automation won't do. Automation will not thread this projector. It's got a fail safe switch down in the bottom. But let's say that the film gets off of this top sprocket, just one side, and it starts damaging film. And it still goes through fail safe switch. See, it keeps right on running. But by me working here, and when I get accustomed to the sounds of these projectors, if something should happen, I come and see what's the problem right quick. Because they'll have a certain tune, because they run the study, and they'll just have a certain tune all the time. And if everything is running smooth, you don't have to worry. Automation will not focus either. Now, the proper way that I learn how to focus, I catch the pupil in your eyes down on the screen. That's what I focus with. And if my boss comes up here and says, Jim, that picture's out of focus, I said, the hell it is, boss. Yo. <laughs> but he knows how to focus it. Then he'll be right back pretty soon to straighten up that focus again. But I learned that years ago from old timers. Catch the pupil in his eyes or your eyes or a woman, whatever's down on the screen, see. And folks, because over on the other end, if you're shooting pictures like he's doing now, he may need some glasses. It's not me. You got it? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, oh. <laughs> 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 well, that's all right. No, 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 uh, that's fine. Yeah, that's yeah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not going to tell. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, 
Now, I like this work. I love it. See, I'm past retirement. I retired, and I've been on the ground, I say on the ground, walking around for about five or six years, and then him and a group of people decided to open up this theater. And they didn't put automation in here, and that's what struck my fancy. So when the other two fellas asked me would I help them out, they're working on other jobs. Well, then I said, oh, sure, I'll come down and help you. Um. How hard does the lamp get inside of the projector? Oh, I don't know. We don't have we don't have no uh, no thermometer in there, but it's, it's exhaust fan up on top. It draws out the smoke and the heat, so it just gets warm. It's warm enough when it's running to wake you up if you go there and put your hand on it. It's half asleep. Yeah, it seems it seems you're kind of burned up in there. Oh, oh yeah, that's done from heat. See, this yeah. this is forty years and plus too. See, all you have to do is put some gears in here to feed the carbons automatically. Now, if the carbons get to running off of their li correct line, where we have an adjustment to put them back on the correct line. And the only time that you really get a break in here is when somebody snatches electricity away from you. And then that just kills everything that I don't have to worry. <laughs> Even Bossio don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> and that has happened. The time clock may go off in the afternoon at 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock. And then the managers say, we'll stick around a while, maybe, especially for storming. And then the manager comes and say, well, Jim, we might as well go home. We don't know what time is coming on. And then when you look at the clock, it may come on at 2 o'clock in the morning because it's allowed to knock down some trees someplace and tore out, tore out the electric current, see? And that's the reason why this part of town is dead. Um, do you... Do you work anything else in your precise projection, like during concerts? Do you run? Anything? Oh no no no! That's, I leave that for the other fella. Uh, this is my baby. Yeah, that that lamp behind you—that's their job. I leave that for them. I don't like that. See, <laughs> and then this kind of profession here, I tell everybody, you entertain some of everybody: doctors, lawyers, preachers, gangsters, religious people, politicians. See, do you entertain some of everybody? Now, besides that, I've only got one man to satisfy. That's him. <laughs> He's trying to satisfy every seat down there. I said, try, because here comes somebody to say, the sound's too loud. Sound's too soft. I can't see. I just got the one man to satisfy. That's what I like about it. But it's awfully hard work. Awfully hard. Um, how did these projectors switch from reel to reel? Oh, they got a little dot up in the upper right-hand corner, and that's my job. Is that what those are for? Those that's, are that's my cue mark. That's my cue mark. When that first one you see up there, I'm supposed to be looking for that dot. And then I start the idle projector to running. And it's running, and I open this lamp house, and the light's going down to right here, and then it stops. There's a little dowser that keeps that light from shining on the film. When that second cue mark comes, I punch some buttons over there, and a dowser takes and raises this dowser and closes that and at the same time. And I take care of the sound and that's, that's the name of the game. You watch TV and see that little dot up in there? Well, that's, that's our cue mark. I always wondered how people could be so careless. Yeah, that's, that's, that's our cue mark, see? Oh. And sometimes you will see a circle down middle, wire, middle part of the screen, sometimes over on the right. I was watching television the other day. Somebody else has done re-cued it. Yeah. Now, if you was way up in age and you needed some eyeglass, I'm gonna tell you this years ago, and you couldn't find the cue mark when you inspected that film, you put a patch in there, you go by click, click. <laughs> this is just some of the things uh, that, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't tell him that, should I, boss you? No, that's all right. Yeah, and then if you get sleepy, see, it was, well, I don't know, where's a tin pan around here on the floor somewhere. Now, if you get, you shooting pictures of me on this? All right. <laughs> now, if you get sleepy in here, you have a pair of pliers in your hand. You put this between, you sit down. And when you go to sleep, you're going to automatically release the grip on the plier. <laughs> you got it? <laughs> <laughs> no, you learn that, but that's some old timers learned me that, but I usually get up and come as walking when I get sleepy. Oh, yeah. That's the <laughs> Oh, no. So you, have one, you have several of those. Oh, yeah, that film comes in. That's a thousand foot of film comes in. Yeah. Yeah. But we use it for other things. But that's yeah. just a little, that's something you learn when you stay with this, this kind of business. That's great. Yeah. Oh, but I, uh, I really love it, and I never get tired of fooling with it. Now, when he called me this morning, I was really due down here for 1 o'clock. 
and he called me up this morning, and I had been up working ever since the break of day, and he said, say, Jim, some young men coming in down here want to see you about 9.35. Mama, just, Mama, I'm talking about my wife, is just ready to feed me breakfast. I say, I'll see you in a few minutes, boss. Yo. So I came down, and I got some film inspected, and now you gentlemen here question me. So I have nothing else to do but the rest of the day. If I don't have nothing to do, now I take a nap, a.m., p.m., and then go to sleep at night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I don't care. What's the uh, headset, the wireless headset? Oh, now that belongs to Bossio and his crew. Uh, I can't answer that. You, but you can get sound over it when it's hooked up. Hmm. Uh -huh. I have some headphones that I have wore in the projection booth. And I'm just sitting around, and I had a great big window to look through, and I didn't want to listen. See that box up there? Yeah. I call that a noise box. There's nothing over there. Well, I used to put the headphones on and sit there, and I could walk to either one of the projectors. You, 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 you would try to make your work easy. Make it comfortable, see? I'm dressed in something. If I get some grease on my hands, I can do that. So I'm in Mama's washing machine. Wear you some old shoes that's comfortable, see it? And then we're union, and then uh, in Denver, uh, where I have a pension, why business agents come around and say, Jim, you had them glasses corrected lately? Every two years. Because he, he doesn't want this man to call him up and say, the picture's out of focus. And if he does, then he's going to come and see me, wondering why I didn't have these correction lamps on. So there's so much that you have to do when you're union. The only thing about union, uh, you draw more money when you work union. Uh, they build a new theater. These are still pictures. And if we took the shutter off, you wouldn't know what's going on down there. It wouldn't be nothing but just a blur. Yeah, see, what we, and it's got to be in time, see, and sometimes it'll get out of time. Uh, say you lose your gear back there that drives that shutter, well, then it's out of time, and then you've got to put new gear in and time that, in, that shutter with this intermittent in here. Mm-hmm. How much of a difference is there between certain films you might project? Let's see, um, is there ever a film? Have we both of you got everything turned on? All right. This is this here's this is carbon. What I got my finger on. That's a positive stick. This is a negative stick. I'm going to have to test these together and then separate them. Put a little gap in there, about a quarter of an inch, to make them burn. Understand? We have an exhaust fan on top that will take out the fumes and the, and the, and the, the gas that comes off them. So I close this door, and that's all set. And I lock this door. Now when I light this, I'll be looking at this little screen up here. That'll tell me about how far apart the carbons are. Now in order to light it, I'll light it, and then I'll, get, I'll go down here to hit this switch. Here the, rect here the uh, rectifiers cut in back there. See, now it's, this is, uh, oh, before I stack it, I'll show you. I'll kill this. This, this lamp operates on direct current, just like in a flashlight. That's uh, AC, alternating current. So I'll, I'll flip the switch. That's right. Now I can take this, and I'll just put it like that, and I can put one finger on this and one finger on that, and it will not bite you. See, it's just like a flashlight. You got it? Yeah. All right. In order to strike it, I gotta do this. See that? Can you see that little light up there? See it? Yeah. Right, now, now that carbon's lit. Now I'll kill that, but we won't need that. Now, I come from the bin. Can you turn it off? I come from the bin with this wheel in my hand. I'm gonna get it ready. This is the take-up wheel down here. So I come like here, and I put this wheel on that stem. It around and then lock that key to keep it from falling. This gate, open this gate. Now I'm going to set the intermittent. And the way I set the intermittent so to be in time with the shutter is with this little knob down here. This turns around. So I've got a unique way of doing this. I got a hole in the shutter hook and I turn it like that. This is the beginning of the reel of film. Pull it down and just that. To the word, uh, this is a head, this is the picture. So this is a number to tell what it is. So I'll come down here and thread it on the little word start. So I'll go through this like this, and the start should be right there. And I go under this sprocket in this manner. 
Put it, push, push the film under that sprocket, but I don't close it. So I'll come back here to this gate, and there's a sprocket in here that I'm going to put this film over, and I look around here to find out where the word start is on it. And when I put the word start over here where the light comes, it's right, and I take this thumb, close that gate in that manner. Did you get it? Mm hmm. All right. Then I'll go back up here, and I'll make the correct loop. With this piece of film up here and take that thumb and close it. This is checking. Now, come down here and I have a sprocket here. So I'll go over this sprocket and make the proper loop down here and take this finger and close it. Then our down from here down is where we take care of the sound. Many years ago before we had sound pictures, we didn't have this part down here. So I'll, this is a sound stabilizer. See it flows. So I'll raise it up, put the film back of it, pull it tight, be sure it's in there, and make an adjustment there, and then go over a big old sprocket right here. See it? And, and be sure it's got a little play in the film there. That's a little too tight, so I'll back off one sprocket hole. Take my thumb, that locks that in place, and you test it there. Come around this big sprocket, over this idler. This is just an idler sprocket. Down in through, behind this idler sprocket, down around this empty reel. Now you do it like this, this is a slick way of doing it. Take your finger, get the film between your finger like that, and come around the reel, pull the reel, pull the film out in this manner, and just pull it through your hand till you get to the end. Take it, go through the reel, lay it on top of that reel like that, go around that reel, be sure it catches, and just keep circling until this comes up real tight. Now I need to go back and check. Check here, check here, check here, check here, check here, check here, check here. Then you want to make a test, and then you turn it by hand. Just turn it over by hand with this knob here. Okay. Now that should run at 90 feet a minute. It should run. This is over here is where we started to run. That's what it sounds like. Without the sound. Run at 90 feet a minute. That's what motion picture is all about. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Now there is some projectors where if it jumps time and you have to put a new gear in it that you can set the shutter time with the intermittent a lot easier, such as a Sentry. It's American made. In other words, I'd rather work on American made. Yeah. Instrument right here is called our aperture. The light goes through there. So much light goes through there that it goes onto that film. They have some foreign projectors. If I miss putting that in on a change of film, I've got to shut this machine down, unthread this part here, pull this aperture out, put a new aperture in it, thread this part back up, and then start it. An American projector is where if you make a misfit on this, you just pull it out and put the correct one in there. And it keeps on running 90 feet a minute. See? Yeah. So uh, I say let's stick with America. 